because my message can be kind of like intense for some people, like the things I believe, I like to pad it with well, skincare and like how I clean my house, you know? What's up, I'm Cece and welcome to my channel. So today we are talking about YouTuber and blogger Mrs. Midwest, real name Caitlin Ann. I do wanna preface and say this is not like a fun lighthearted video. We're gonna talk about some kind of heavy stuff. So if you're not feeling up for that, maybe don't watch or just watch later. But I do think this is an important video to make and something that needs to be talked about. So Mrs. Midwest, like I said, is a blogger and a YouTuber. At the time I'm filming this, she has 175,000 subscribers on YouTube. She is a wife and stay-at-home mom-to-be. She blogs and makes videos about homemaking, femininity, or her definition of femininity, cooking, thrifting, baking, hanging out with her dog and her husband, pretty normal stuff. I don't know if I need to say this, but as a feminist, I have no issue with any woman wanting to be a homemaker or stay-at-home wife or mom. I think that's totally a personal choice, and I don't agree with anyone who is shaming someone or making someone feel bad for making that choice. But I do have issues with Caitlyn for a multitude of other reasons. So I'm just asking that before you try to argue with me or try to defend her in the comments, please just watch the whole video and all of the evidence I'm presenting and my argument. So Caitlin's Instagram bio says, wife, homemaker, and YouTuber, blogging on femininity, faith, marriage, and traditional living. On the surface, that pretty much sums up her whole deal. Caitlin promotes a traditional lifestyle. Her husband works. She stays at home and handles the household maintenance. And even though this is not my ideal lifestyle or a belief system I subscribe to, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of enjoyed her videos at first. She of course says some things that I don't agree with, but I do think when she talks about her beliefs or her religion on her channel, she does so in a way that is much less inflammatory than people like Paul and Morgan or like Girl Defined. And she wraps it all up in a very cute, aesthetic package. So I definitely see the appeal and see why people like her videos. She also says over and over again that she has just chosen this particular lifestyle for herself and her videos are for people who are also interested in that and if you don't agree with that or don't want that for yourself that's totally fine. She just overall comes across as a very laid back like live and let live kind of person who is just presenting the things that she's into but not trying to force her beliefs on anyone else. And that's a defense I hear of her a lot is like she's just living her life, she's not hurting anyone, leave her alone. And just a quick glance at her channel or her social media and this definitely seems like the case. Most of her online presence is very palatable, very inoffensive, but if that were actually the case I would not be making this video. So I have too much time on my hands these days and I did a little bit of digging and a little bit of research on Caitlyn, Mrs. Midwest. I'm not trying to be super dramatic here, but it really does seem like her sweet exterior and kind of live and let live attitude may be a facade and kind of a cover for some pretty extreme beliefs that she holds. I think she is very good at openly promoting only the palatable, inoffensive beliefs and keeping quiet about the ones that might get some well-deserved pushback. Because my message can be kind of like intense for some people, like the things I believe, I like to pad it with well, skincare and like how I clean my house, you know? But I really do think that there may be a much darker side to Mrs. Midwest than we see and then what she presents on her social media. I will just say as a little disclaimer, I obviously do not know Caitlyn personally. I cannot say with 100% certainty that she holds any of these beliefs, but I am just going to present some evidence, some things I've seen, some things that she has said and posted that make me think that she might hold some actually very extreme and hateful beliefs and may not be as harmless as she seems. If you're a fan or just a casual watcher of hers and you don't know these things, then I am sorry to be the one to inform you. If you're a fan of hers and you do know these things and you are fine with it, then stay away from me. So the first thing I found was an interview that Caitlin did in January of 2019 with YouTuber Yogi Oabs. He is a known misogynist, a promoter of neo-masculinity. He is a vocal anti-feminist. He advocates making women behave because they are naturally more sinful than men. 
couple red flags there. But this whole interview is pretty eye-opening. In it, Caitlin is a lot more candid. She seems to kind of drop her facade a little bit and speak way more openly about some of the beliefs she doesn't readily share on her own channel. But I watched it so you guys don't have to. And here are some of the highlights. So in this interview, Caitlin mentions a blogger named Roosh V as inspiration for her traditional womanhood. She specifically cited his blog called Return of Kings. This blog was a sort of pickup artist dating advice website for men, all from a hyper misogynistic perspective. Caitlin said she was looking for weight loss inspiration online and that's how she found Return of Kings and then got into reading more of this type of content. So highlights of Roosh V's blog include 35 pretty girls who became fat and ugly, seven ways modern women treat men like dogs, seven ways women are just like abandoned dogs, women lie about everything. There's also some racism sprinkled in here just for fun. Shocking, I know he seemed like such a good guy so far, but on a blog post titled 11 real ratings of women on the one to 10 scale, Roosh V took photos of women, I guess, random photos of women from the internet, which is so creepy. And then he had his readers give them each a rating from one to 10 and calculated the average rating for each one. And then he wrote a little paragraph about it. So one of the women included in this article is black. She was rated a five and he had to say about her, I prefer dark chocolate when it comes to chocolate, 75% cacao to be exact, but not when it comes to women. This black woman is objectively attractive for her race, but that's still not enough to push her out of an average rating. So I can't talk about Roosh V without mentioning his biggest claim to fame, which is that he once argued that rape should be legal on private property. This was in a 2015 blog post titled How to Stop after getting a lot of obviously very well-deserved criticism for this article, Rushvi has since added this editor's note to this article on his website. I don't know who he thinks he's fooling. I'm not buying it. Here's an excerpt from it. If it becomes legal under my proposal, a girl will protect her body in the same manner that she protects her purse and smartphone. If becomes legal, a girl will not enter an impaired state of mind where she can't resist being dragged off to a bedroom with a man who she is unsure of. She'll scream, yell, or kick at his attempt while bystanders are still around. If rape becomes legal, she will never be unchaperoned with a man she doesn't want to sleep with. After several months of advertising this law throughout the land, it would be virtually eliminated on the first day it is applied. Yeah, why do us silly women just, just keep letting ourselves get raped? It's not like we carry knives and pepper spray and avoid walking alone at night and take self-defense classes and watch our drink every second we're in a bar and download apps that will alert our friends if we're not home by the time we're supposed to be and avoid wearing ponytails because that could be a potential way for an attacker to grab us. No, we just need to start protecting our bodies like we protect our smartphones and our purses. This is just like completely absolving potential risks of the responsibility to not commit just like the worst example of victim blaming I've ever seen in my life. God, I was gonna save the really bad stuff for last, but it's all really bad. So yeah, sweet, innocent, feminine Caitlin cites this blog as part of how she got into traditional womanhood and became red-pilled. If you don't know what the red pill is, it is, I mean, at its core, it's basically a philosophy of misogyny. The name is a reference to the matrix and taking the red pill as a metaphor for accepting uncomfortable truths about the world. So according to those who have been red pilled, these truths are that feminism is toxic and destroying the world, that men have it worse than women, that women need to be and secretly want to be dominated and controlled. There's a lot of overlap between this kind of ideology and what incels believe. Both of these ideologies prey upon vulnerable men who have had tough luck with dating or had bad experiences with women. And red pill women or red pill wives are basically women who subscribe to this philosophy, like Caitlin. There's an entire subreddit for it. It's called Red Pill Wives, if you really want to subject yourself to that. In this interview, Caitlin also openly denies that transgender women are women. Honestly, zero surprise there, like at all, but I guess just add that to the checklist of things I don't like about her. We'll just sprinkle in a little transphobia for fun. She says that when she was searching online for ways to be more feminine, the only things that she could find were advice for trans people. 
she says that she found this disturbing her exact word and that this is part of what inspired her to start writing and blogging about femininity anytime you look up how to be more feminine it's literally for trans people like how to be a more feminine <laughs> trans woman you know wow. it's not for women there's no there's nothing out there for women to say here's how to be more feminine and that was disturbing to me i just want to say that i have never once in my entire life felt like my womanhood or my femininity is undermined or invalidated in any way by the existence of trans women. To anyone who feels that way, you might just want to take a look inside and just see what that's really about. So later on in the interview, Yogi Oabs, the interviewer, says that he is bad at interior decorating and he also can't seem to keep his home clean and decluttered so that it must be genetic that women are just better at those things. Really solid logic there, buddy. And then watching this, I was like, have you considered that maybe you just have taste and you're too lazy to keep your home clean like a normal adult? But Caitlin agrees with him that she does believe cleaning and nesting are inherently more feminine and that there's a genetic component to women being better at those things. Later in this interview, she also uses incel red pill terminology and advises girls to not date a beta male when they're searching for a husband. She said when she met her husband, he was very forward and very like a leader. And she said the first thing he asked her was, is that your natural hair color? and that it was refreshing that he didn't care about her feelings. When I met my husband, the first thing he asked me, we were on a school trip to Israel. We were there for a month. The first thing he asked me was, is that your natural hair color? And I was like, oh my gosh, like this guy does not care. Like, <laughs> you know, my like feelings, and it was kind of refreshing. So this has all been a nice dose of misogyny. And perhaps unsurprisingly, a lot of this really misogynistic incel red pill ideology goes hand in hand with alt-right and white supremacist ideology. So you can probably see where I'm heading with this. Next, I took a little dive into some of the accounts that Caitlin follows on Instagram. A lot of the other accounts she follows are not as blatant, but they just give off like strong neo-Nazi vibes. A lot of them are like European culture, European people, European pride. First of all, Europe is not a homogenous culture it's just mostly where white people are from like be proud of being polish or german or dutch all you want but if you say you're proud of being european i'm kind of gonna assume you're just proud of your whiteness second of all if it really is just about european pride and the culture why are the people on these pages like blonde and blue-eyed and lily white there are non-white people in europe there are also people in europe who are white but might have darker hair and skin and eyes. Now, you may think all of that is a little bit of a stretch. That's okay. Personally, I don't in context of what I'm about to show you next. So perhaps one of the most damning pieces of evidence regarding Caitlyn's alleged white supremacist leanings is from her blog. It's a post from July of 2019 titled 20 Things I Recommend. One of the 20 things she recommends is YouTube History Lessons by Stephen Molyneux, who is a known and very shameless white supremacist. She just tosses that in there with like a cookie recipe and a brand of laundry detergent she likes, literally. So Stephen Molyneux describes himself as a race realist. He basically promotes scientific racism, which is the pseudoscientific idea that non-white races are genetically inferior in any multitude of ways. I don't think I need to say this, but race realism is absolute nonsense, not real science. It's just an attempt at justifying white supremacy. But I'll share some notable quotes of his. Screaming racism at people because blacks are collectively less intelligent is insane. He has defended racism and the as, quote, an overreaction to Jewish people being a legitimate threat to the white race. 
Here's his quote. It's from a video called Migratory Patterns of Predatory Immigrants in March of 2016. The Germans were in danger of being taken over by what they perceived as Jewish-led communism, and Jewish-led communism had wiped out tens of millions of white Christians in Russia, and they were afraid of the same thing. And there was this wild overreaction and all this kind of stuff. Don't you hate it when you just overreact and died six million people? In a video called Genetics and Crime, he interviews criminologist Kevin M. Beaver and says the following. One of the biggest questions in America is ethnic crime rates. And you know, the Asians are the model minority. While the American Blacks and Blacks around the world have truly shockingly high levels of criminality, and the general explanation is, you know, slavery plus race plus poverty, whatever it is which creates this unholy brew. But as far as I understand it, there are significant contributions that your field can make to help people untangle why there are such differences in ethnic positive and negative behaviors in society. American Blacks have roughly a standard IQ below whites. So just let that soak in for a minute, and then I'm gonna read you the direct quote from Mrs. Midwest's blog where she recommends Stephen Molyneux's work. She says, I'm a big fan of this man and his philosophy. It's brash, offensive, and my favorite type of YouTube content. I love his presentations in particular because they combine culture, history, and philosophy into one amazing learning lesson. So the actual video that Mrs. Midwest recommended, it was called The Fall of Rome. I can't watch because Stephen Molyneux's YouTube account was actually banned and deleted for promoting hate speech. It was deleted by YouTube in one fell swoop along with David Duke, former Grand Wizard of the Klan, and Richard Spencer, known neo-Nazi and white supremacist. The only thing I could find about this video was a post, funnily enough, on the subreddit Bad History. It gives a pretty detailed summary and basically debunks the entire thing. I'll link it below if you do want to check it out but his video was basically a largely inaccurate comparison of the US to ancient Rome. From what I can see, this video does seem to be a little lighter on the race than a lot of his other videos, which kind of fits my theory that Caitlin is very careful about which beliefs of her she openly promotes on her channel and on her social media. But the fact that she recommends this guy and says she is, quote, a big fan of his philosophy, I think tells us all we need to know. So I hope by now you can see that I'm not just on her needlessly. And I really do think that some of the ideologies she appears to hold, at the very least, she gives audience to, combined with the way she presents her content, are very dangerous. And the reason I find all of this so scary and disturbing and the reason I wanted to make this video and hopefully bring this kind of more into the light is precisely because Caitlyn does come across as so sweet and normal and like she's just a normal girl sharing some things she likes on her YouTube. She wraps all of this up in a very palatable aesthetic package. She is literally drawing people in to her channel and her blog with baking tips and homemaking tips and cookie recipes and then once they're there directing them toward blatant very shameless white ideology and saying that it's so educational even if you want to dress it up as traditionalism or saving the west or race realism or whatever other cover you try to use to make your race more palatable i just have zero patience and zero tolerance for that as we all should regarding her channel there have been studies and a lot of pretty extensive reporting done on how the youtube algorithm in particular and the way it recommends videos have radicalized people into the alt-right into extremist ideologies like this and i just don't think it's too much of a stretch that someone could be a casual watcher of her channel and be fed these videos and these ideologies that are presenting more and more extreme beliefs and be led down a very, very dark path. And I'm not saying to dox her or harass her, please don't do that. But also be aware of what you are potentially supporting if you do watch her YouTube videos or give her clicks on her blog. If you have friends who watch her and know people who support her, please let them know, either talk to them about this, send them this video, something, yeah. That's it for me today, guys. I'm sorry this was not a fun topic, but um, I felt strongly about needing to talk about this and to share this and to kind of present it in one place so that people can see where I'm coming from. Yeah, don't watch Mrs. Midwest.